from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Hillsdale, Ontario, for living at ceased members of their family. The second is an anonymous donor from Etobicoke, Ontario, for the intentions of the family, for the living and deceased members of the Inglis family, and in thanksgiving for the daily TV Mass. The third is an anonymous donor from Brampton, Ontario, for the living and deceased members of the Diorio, Frascasi, Fracassi, Alfred, and Listage families, in thanksgiving for blessings received. For the sake of the passion of Christ, our donor prays, may God have mercy on us and on the whole world. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. <laughs> Love righteousness, you rulers of the earth, Think of the Lord in goodness and seek him with sincerity of heart, because he is found by those who do not put him to the test and manifests himself to those who do not distrust him. For perverse thoughts separate people from God, and when his power is tested, it exposes the foolish, because wisdom will not enter a deceitful soul or dwell in a body enslaved to sin. For a holy and disciplined spirit will flee from deceit and will leave foolish thoughts behind and will be ashamed at the approach of unrighteousness. For wisdom is a kindly spirit, but will not free blasphemers from the guilt of their words, because God is witness of their inmost feelings and a true observer of their hearts and a hearer of their tongues. Because the Spirit of the Lord has filled the world, and that which holds all things together knows what is said. The Word of the Lord. Searched me and known me. 
The Lord be with you. <clears throat> and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better for you if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel brings together three rather disparate sayings of Jesus, sayings which were probably spoken and developed at some length at different times in the course of his ministry. The first two have to do with relations among the disciples, and the third with faith. In the first one, Jesus speaks of occasions for stumbling, or as an older translation puts it, of occasions for scandal. In the, fra in the Gospels, the phrase, the little ones, sometimes refers to children, and sometimes as here to believing members of the community. Although there is such a thing as false scandal, when we overreact or misinterpret something in a way that makes it appear more negative than it actually is, there are occasions when real scandal is given. It might be something we say or don't say, something we do or don't do, something that suggests an abandonment of faith or a disregard of fundamental moral values. Some people, on seeing and reacting to such things, find their faith and practice challenged and weakened. The issue might be a disregard of religious practice like the Mass or a mocking of the various forms of popular devotion which over the centuries have flourished in the Church. The abuse of children, adolescents, 
and vulnerable adults by clergy and others working in some official capacity in the name of the church has been over the last several decades a source of enormous scandal. The incidents tragically as are neither isolated nor few. They have occurred in numerous countries in almost every part of the globe. In a number of cases, their seriousness has been added to by the failure of bishops and religious superiors to respond quickly and decisively in reaching out to the victims and in dealing in a just and effective manner in curtailing the harm being done by the perpetrators. All this has been a real scandal for many in the church. The revelations that have come out of one country after another over the past many years have had a cumulative negative effect on many. They've become so disheartened by what has been revealed that they have abandoned the practice of their religion and sometimes even their faith. To underline the seriousness of what he is saying, Jesus has recourse to a powerful image. It would be better for you, he says, if a millstone were tied around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. With this saying, Jesus reminds us that what we do or fail to do especially when it comes to religion and morality, has implications not only for ourselves, but also for others, whether we intend it to be so or not. The second saying in today's reading touches on the theme of sin and forgiveness. The context is once again the community of faith. If another disciple sins, Jesus says, you must rebuke the offender. And if there is repentance, you must forgive. The first part of the saying encourages us to help others to recognize the evil and destructive behavior they're involved in and to encourage them to abandon it and seek reconciliation with what, whoever they may have hurt or harmed by their actions. The emphasis in the rest of the saying is on forgiveness. If the same person, Jesus says, sins against you seven times a day and repents, each time you must forgive. In the course of his public life, Jesus come back a number of times to the importance of forgiveness. This is most strikingly the case in, his, in the emphasis he gives to it in the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses, he says. We pray, rather, as we forgive those who trespass against us. To underline the unique importance of forgiveness in Christian life, Matthew, in his account of the Sermon on the Mount, includes immediately after the Our Father a saying of Jesus encouraging and warning us to be ready and willing to forgive those who might have sinned against us. If you forgive others their trespasses, he says, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you. To forgive those who in some way have hurt or harmed us is often far from easy. When it comes to the feelings that surround such hurt, it sometimes seems all but impossible to go beyond them. It may in fact take months, even years, before we're able to forgive such a person from our heart. In a situation like that, we need to begin by not nurturing whatever negative feelings we might have for that person. To be able in such a case truly to forgive is a great gift, not only to the individual who has sinned against us, but also to ourselves. Forgiveness liberates us from the anger and bitterness, which, if unchecked, can end by robbing us of whatever inner peace we might have had. The third saying in the reading deals with faith. The issue is raised by the apostles who asked Jesus to increase their faith. In a passage similar to this one, the father of a boy suffering from epilepsy asked Jesus to heal his son. All things can be done, Jesus says, for the one who believes. 
To this, the father responds, I believe, help my unbelief. The fact that our culture has become, at least on the surface, increasingly secular has made faith far more difficult of a challenge than ever. Like the father of the epileptic boy, we know that our faith is not all that it can be and should be. And so we pray, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all those listed in the daily TV Mass, Book of Remembrance, for all who have died and have no one to pray for them, and for the souls in purgatory, may our Heavenly Father grant them eternal life and let perpetual light shine upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may be more sensitive to the fact that what we say and do can have an impact for good or evil on others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly and the chronically ill, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees fleeing hunger, war, and violence, that they will succeed in finding a new home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers, as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, become partakers of his divinity, became partaker of our humanity. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless <clears throat> God, we ask you. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are, <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.